Good afternoon. Hi. Hi. Um, so that was so phenomenal. It allows me to take the majority of my time to go micro instead of macro. Everything I just heard is exactly right and very much what I believe in. And you know, I'm in a point in my career right now where I'm not doing a whole lot of speaking, but when this came across my desk, I really wanted to do it because very honestly, I just admire this industry so much. You know, I grew up working retail hours, every hour the store was open for the majority of my life, from 14 to 34, uh, and obviously after 22 when I was done with school, I spent so much time in a retail store interacting with customers, and I remember thinking, man, literally one of the only industries that goes harder than I do is this industry. And so my admiration brings me here today, and I'm just really grateful to be with all of you. Look, I think, to go into detail around the macro to this core concept of maybe, there's a lot going on in this industry that I think really speaks to opportunity of going on the offense in the face of defense. When I think about hospitality, the restaurant industry, when I just think of just basic blocking and tackling on practical, like opening up the place and living, just labor costs and food costs alone is like scary if you just really think about the margins and the realities, just practical business running. Forget about consumer behavior and interests and how people want to eat and what they're doing, which is always the thing that I have the most humility towards. One of the great balances, especially the most artistic people in the room, is balancing your vision and what you want to accomplish and having that conviction with equally having enough humility to understand that the market might not care and might not be ready or a missed moment, or contextual to the neighborhood, or all the other variables we all have to think through. When I thought about this talk, what I wanted to talk about, what really stood out for me is, what's the single most practical thing, including the 20% of this audience that is not directly running restaurants, but is servicing it or helping, what is the one universal thing that I can speak on that is actionable, and if one actually decides to run after it and attack it, that they would actually get enormous benefit from in the reality of the market we're in. And ironically, it's something so obvious but incredibly nuanced. So I'm gonna go into a very narrow place from the only perspective of this has the best chance of helping most people in here really have a huge impact on their actual business and frankly even their life. The TikTokification of all of social media that is starting right now in this exact second is a very big deal for this room. Let me explain why. When I say the TikTokification, for the last 15 years, actually, let me, let me tell you a quick story. My first three investments were Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. Obviously, that changed the course of my life, but in there is a really funny story, which was when I invested in Tumblr, which was a New York-based company, um, which was fun for me in a lot of ways, I called my brother AJ and I said, bro, I just invested in Tumblr. In the prior six months, I had invested in Facebook and Twitter. A year earlier, I told my brother I was taking all my life savings, which wasn't much at the time, and was gonna invest in these companies because I thought they were gonna change the world. And when I finally got Tumblr, I called my brother and I said, I think this one could be the biggest of them all. <laughs> um, Tumblr had a great exit, sold for a billion dollars to Yahoo, but clearly that prediction wasn't right. But the prediction wasn't right because of the casting of the operator. We all know in here, many people have had better locations, better ideas, but many people sit here with more success because they out-operated, and that matters. But the reason I was so high on Tumblr was Facebook and Twitter were based on the social graph. You follow people, and that was the framework. Tumblr, for many of you in this room, just looking at some of the faces, I know some of you kind of grew up with it, it was based on the interest graph. You followed things that you were interested in. And that's why it was creative. It was extremely creative. And for me, being like really operational entrepreneur, I didn't fully, fully even get it at first. I just knew that every high school kid at the time was very interested and I needed to put in the hours to understand why. And once I started digging in why, I realized that the social graph changes. Many of you no longer give a crap about the people you started following on Facebook and Twitter because people change, things change. But interest, especially your top three or four passions, tend to grow. Of course you'll add some, some will decline, but there's a much longer play. 
Right now what's going on in TikTok is the reason it's working and take on the side like China and all, like take, you know, one of the great reasons the world back to maybe lose is you deploy your opinion of one on something and don't apply it to your business which is a whole different framework, right? Forget about what you might think at this exact second about TikTok, whether you're all about the China conversation or if you're all about it's ruining every high school kid on earth. (laughs) Take that and put it on the side. Understand the macro thing that I'm gonna try to deploy here because I think it will work for so many of you, which is we have now started the process of every social network going through a process where it's going to benefit content, the single piece of content, more than you amassing followers. Why does this matter? This matters because so many of you in this room, and I've done a lot of homework on this, given that I'm in the business, Resi, now with Capon and Rodolitz and Chef Connor with the BCR group, and just what I do for a living, many people in here, how do I say this right, are atrocious at social content. (laughs) They're atrocious for so many different reasons. One is something I have a lot of empathy for. They desperately care about their brand and because of that, they overanalyze every single photo to make sure it stands up to their single subjective opinion of being quality and what that does is makes everything that you guys know which is it makes it highly ineffective, a complete waste of time and money and drives no business but feeds their insecurity slash ego. Two, if they're not in that spot, which I, again, am empathetic to, you know, so many of you in this room have such high quality venues and you feel it aesthetically needs to match the room, the menu, I get it, but I also know why it doesn't work. If you can get over that hump, which is hard as shit for this room, but if you get over that hump, you just don't understand how to actually make content per platform based on the options that are in front of you. You don't understand that right this second, Facebook fan pages are back if you do text only ads or text only organic content. It's not what you do day to day. I understand that, that makes sense to me. No different than the many things I don't understand. What I want to get across in this short time together is the practicality of what I'm talking about. At this moment, this exact second that we're together, I'm very lucky because I get to deliver this in this keynote, social is now at scale. Brand is built on social media. Not on television ads, because they don't even exist anymore because streaming's eating it all up. Not in the newspaper or print ads or outdoor or radio or traditional PR. Brand, which is the best sales engine in the world, is built on social. Even this industry, and I grew up in the wine industry, in my era it was very similar, right? Reviews from two or three or four outlets in this world, similar to reviews in The Wine Spectator or Robert Parker, dictated so much of what was happening. Even that, for some of the OGs in this room, even the best reviews from the best places today are not carrying the weight that they did 15 or 20 years ago. Brand is built in social, and at this exact second, social is resetting to give opportunity to every person in this room who has completely misplayed or disrespected or not understood it. That's awesome because it's leveled the playing field. I, I'm so empathetic for people who are like, damn, I missed that boat. This competitor or this other place has 700,000 followers on Instagram, I have 19, and it almost defeats you from even wanting to do. If all of you knew what I know right now, which is all of that has now been scrapped. Scrapped. And now it is the individual pieces of content that if it's good, and they get to decide, the people on the other screen, if it's good, it can have as much awareness as it possibly can reach. Three, four, five million views. Harder than it was 24 months ago on TikTok, but that algorithm is coming to YouTube Shorts, has come to Instagram at scale in the next six months, and will continue to scale because it is the stronger algorithm than the social graph. This means everyone here, one way or the other, I don't know what people's P&Ls look like. Some of you can hire, some of you can do things, others can't. But what that also means is even if you can't afford, you yourself, I mean, do you understand that this phone now, this camera, is better than the cameras that Hollywood had 25 years ago? This is no longer an opportunity for anybody in this room to give an excuse of, well, I don't know or I don't have. 
If you don't know, there's an amazing website that will teach you every single best practice on every single social network. I see a lot of you have pads, so I'll write it out for you. It's G-O-O-G-L-E.com. How do I post a video as a restaurant on TikTok? Enter, unlimited. And by the way, if you're like me and can't read for shit, I don't know if you've heard about the second biggest search engine in the world. It's called YouTube. And you could type it in there and there is unlimited best practices or how to of doing any of this. This is about making the religious shift to understand the single best way that you can grow your business, especially during a time where there's real stuff coming down the pipe. Like, I don't know anybody who, I don't know how you guys all roll, but if anybody read or listened to the FedEx earnings report, the economy hasn't started to suck shit. So what's that gonna mean? A lot worse things. And what's that gonna be? More pressure. Every extra customer that doesn't come in, while cost of goods go up, while the market hasn't caught up and expects to get paid more, is a really tricky six to 18 months here. This is what compels me to be here with you today because in my brain, I know that if this room got real serious about short form and long form content and really took it serious, like you, you, not, oh good, I don't want anybody sitting here and saying, oh Gary might be right, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna hire my 23-year-old niece. She gets this shit. <laughs> None of that. <laughs> the single guaranteed way that a small business, and that's what we are, me included, that a small business can grow its top line revenue and its demand is through social media content. There's also something else. What social media does when you do it right, when you put out content with purpose, meaning I believe, I mean we're gonna do this because I'm involved, I believe taking the risk of adding or new menu items is a risk that can be mitigated through content. What if everybody here started a content pillar on their social once they have audience, and don't forget you don't even need audience, once they start posting, What if they created a what if Wednesday where you've got seven to 10 dishes you've been contemplating and what if you just make it, film it, make it and say what do you think? Do you think I should add this to the list? Do you think I should add this to the menu? What that ends up doing is giving you the most important thing that I've been building my career on for the last 15 years which is qualitative feedback. Not the math but the words. When you post that and you get 78 comments and you read them all it gives you a pulse of the consumer. When people ask me, why have you done this? Why has this worked? It's because I have the humility to know I know nothing. Let there be no confusion. For all the good stuff that's happened for me, I literally think it's the luck of the DNA draw and the humility of understanding the consumer is always right. And if the consumer is right about something that I don't want to do, I can choose not to do it. But the consumer is right. I don't have to make some sort of product or thing or restaurant. I don't have to do it, but the data sits there. And social media is the cleanest and scaled data of what the consumer is thinking of the moment in the world and people continue to not pay attention to it and that's why people continue to be baffled about things like elections and trends. Like, I'm baffled that mom jeans came back. but I knew it was happening nine months before it happened. (laughs) Every one of you can know those same things. For the more mature restaurant groups that were to do this at scale, you could start picking locations because of it. My friends, we are so uncomfortably disrespecting this thing and the apps on it, it scares me. If anything, from this talk, I beg you to say, back to the joke about the niece, you. You, if you sit here today, and I'm gonna assume if you're here in the middle of the day on a Monday early in September when it really matters as you prep for the rest of the year, that there's not a person here that doesn't not care about their business. If you care about your business, you are required in my humble opinion 
to allocate the 30 to 40 hours of research to understand what's happening on social media. The reason I believe that is, it is the only place where you can go micro viral, micro viral, just a little, just a little up your ante and it can lead to 20, 40, 80% of increase in traffic. Then you start getting into what I'm really scared about which is this trend at eating at home, people will go to restaurants forever until it's all over, promise. Until the robots come down and kill us all, <laughs> it's gonna happen. But you know what's going on. This private clubs, at home people serving, different trends, there's things chipping away. And as things chip away, technology gets in the middle and takes your money. What do you think Uber did? What do you think Resi does? It becomes and allows people to sit in the middle. As people want delivery, and as people want convenience, they're gonna sit in the middle and they're gonna chip away. We have to build real relationships with the consumer to be a moat against the things that drive us traffic. The only thing that can save you against all the technology that's coming that's gonna drive traffic for you is you driving it yourself, and if you don't, if you are not a marketing machine, if you don't, that will come to your margin systematically over time to where it's not sustainable. And they're not gonna stop. So you need to start. To give you context, there's not a business in here, including the B2B providers to the restaurants here, that shouldn't be producing three, four, five pieces of content a day across three, four, five meaningful platforms on social a day. These are numbers that people struggle with when they first hear it. To be very frank, only my admiration for this industry and a lot of you in this room made me say three, four, five a day because in real talk, I think you should be making 15. This is a huge delta. I make 100 pieces of content a day as a human being and I don't make enough. The fuck do you think I think you should be doing for a business? <laughs> There's a term we talk about at VaynerMedia and the companies I run, which is once you see this, you can't unsee it. The reason I'm desperate for you to, at bare minimum, just do this for your family and yourself, forget about this talk, just make 15 TikToks, just make 15 TikToks in the next week or two, because what I know is for some of you, one will go and then weird shit's gonna happen. Things are gonna fill up, calls, resi, open tape, things are gonna happen and you're gonna taste it. You know, here's a good analogy, back to analogies. My single favorite thing to do in the world when I'm out on business or with friends is to make someone eat oysters or uni. <laughs> it is baffling to me how many people tell me they hate oysters but have never had one. <laughs> so many of you are very passionate about this. You are passionate that people try something that they've decided because it's a little off the beaten path that they don't like and nothing makes you happier than when they try real uni for the first time and fall in love with it, you feel great. The hypocrisy of so many of you that love to do that with food in the way that you're deploying your opinion on TikTok content is extreme. Your great joy when you do that with oysters and uni is what I'm looking for from just four of you. I'm very realistic when I look at this crowd. <laughs> I know that the majority of you are not gonna do anything about what I just talked about. <laughs> that the energy I'm deploying has got you a little hyped right now or a hair curious, but by next Tuesday you're gonna be worrying about some real shit and you're gonna forget all about this. <laughs> but for the four of you in this room that are gonna do something about it, the joy that I get every time, to this day, the core reason I think I'm still speaking is for the email in four months. Nothing excites me more than knowing I'm gonna be leaving here very shortly and two of you are gonna email me in the next three or four months and I'm coming to eat for free and it's gonna be delicious. <laughs> I wish, data, I wish technology was far enough along to like, put something in me right now and on the screen it could show you analytically how much respect I have for everyone in this room, really. 
This is truly one of my favorite industries in the world. I'm lucky enough that I get to touch a lot of them. I really love this room. I'm telling you, please, for yourselves, because a lot of tension is coming. There's a lot of things you could do. There's a lot of innovation. But I'm telling you, there's nothing within a country mile of you getting very serious about this content at this exact moment. This talk is very, very different 24 months ago, 48 months ago, because the relevancy of virality on the first post, if you've never done it again, would be totally different than what I'm talking about right now. There will be a land grab for the next 24 to 36 months predicate on people that understand and go hard on YouTube Shorts, which is YouTube's version of TikTok, TikTok, re-engaging with Instagram that I know all of you are struggling with your content right now because reach is way down, but they're about to tweak it to give you virality. This is the time, this is the moment, and I hope you seize it. Thank you.